So hello, everybody. Welcome to the next episode of the EMEA Recruitment Podcast. As uh, Jenny mentioned, delighted to welcome Tatiana onto the podcast today. So first things first, uh, Happy New Year. We're recording this in uh, January 2021. So uh, I know last year was a very um, challenging year for everybody. So um, yeah, what, what are you looking forward to this year, Tatiana? Let's try and uh, keep things positive as a starting point. <laughs> I think as everyone, we would like to forget about 2020 and the COVID <laughs> and start life um, as normal, mm. traveling and having the business and the economy is growing. Mm. I consider that this will not be fully the case, of course. Yeah. So unfortunately, the life will not be back 100%. Mm. But still, so the most important that... Uh, both us and our family and the business can be healthy. I think this is the what I'm looking forward for sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, fingers crossed. And hopefully by this time next yeah. year, we're in a situation where we can do these podcasts in person again, you know, so it's oh, uh, yeah. dreaming. Uh, <laughs> Dream. travel and the personal meetings again. But uh, I, I know it's strange because I know the first question I had uh, lined up to ask you was about, um, you know, the, the fact you've worked in finance now for for a, a large number of years, I think it's 30 years yeah. in total. So it's long, yeah. a long time. And, and the, the, yeah. what I was going to ask you is the, maybe the, the, the thing you've, the biggest learning curve you've gone through that where you might um, have some uh, in, interesting insights to pass on to the, to the network. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I, I mean, but I guess, you know, it could be interesting just to also get your thoughts on what you've learned about yourself and, 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 and the business from, you know, the, the COVID situation as well. So it's still, so okay. it's two, two points to the first question, okay. really, what you've learned over the 30 years, but specifically also what you think you've learned over the last um, the nine, 10 months, really. Okay. Yeah, I was working different companies with different cultures, different environment. And I started with Unilever when I was young. At that time, it was really the more training, I would say, and experience and then it was a Mars company and that was a very heavy job and in many areas. Uh, and then lately, last almost 20 years, <clears throat> I'm working in Oriflame, uh, different positions, different countries, but still one company. At that time, what I can tell, uh, and I'm only one thing that is not changed, you're absolutely right, is the finance. I'm still in finance area. Mm -hmm. But finance has a different perception. So uh, before it was more analytical things. Right now, it is, of course, more strategy, concept, management, still a lot of routines. And um, what I learn uh, a lot, irregardless where you are in finance or not, what is super important is to have a great team uh, around you. If you have a great team, whatever challenges we are having, we will manage to do so, uh, including COVID. Uh, if, if I can just uh, reflect with the COVID, we have very tough, as all of us, I think, year in 2020. And the finance uh, had to prepare. I don't know how many scenarios did we prepare in terms of how sales will look like, how profit will look like, what should we do, how many projects we should cut, and how many in efficiencies projects should we implement. And uh, without team, we will not be able to achieve anything. And uh, what we achieved is I'm proud myself and proud of my team really was very good results. We uh, did not expect such results during such period of time. So this is uh, the learning. Uh, and th this is exactly the second one, the scenario planning. During such turbulent period, it is so important not to think what is your budget, how do you achieve the budget? It's very important to think that what if scenario, if this is happened, what will you do? And then you are prepared for that. So mm. I think these are two very important things. Mm -hmm. And a little bit looking forward. Uh, it, the situation is difficult. What will be in future? So how to achieve that? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just going back on something you mentioned there. I thought, obviously, you've been, you mentioned about the fact that the, the one thing that's been consistent is that your career has been, obviously, in, in finance and all, all the roles there. I mean, uh, and then you also mentioned what if scenarios. So maybe a, a good question to ask you is what what if you didn't do finance? What would you be doing? Do you think? Wow, <laughs> very very interesting question. Uh, I am not a salesperson, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, probably if I'm not in finance, let's say if I'm not in the company, what will I do? Then I will open my own company. 
uh, and uh, I will do my own business if I can say like that. So I mm -hmm. think that is, if not finance, then our own business. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've got that that entrepreneurial side and commercial side, which is obviously valuable for being in the in the roles that you've been in over the years in in, in finance as a, a business partner as well. Uh, I think. Um, but the other thing you mentioned, obviously, also you had you've had twenty years at uh, at one company, which is very unusual in in this in this day and age. Yeah. Uh, I mean, how has that come around? Because I, I think a lot of the listeners will be quite intrigued by that yeah. because it's something that um yeah you, you very rarely see you know so um what what's your experience of that and would you recommend it to other people really i guess uh, that's very interesting of course uh, the company uh, over 20 years i'm changing over 20 years company is changing over 20 years we do have still a lot of people working more than 20 years uh, in the company uh, that is also probably unusual. Uh, and what is super important for such type of company is the culture. Yeah. And we have this togetherness when we are saying togetherness, that's really you feel no politics. You can address many questions to top management. That is very important. So I think this helps a lot to stay for long. But on top uh, is important that uh, the positions were very different. I was in finance in uh, Russia first. Then we opened in Russia, how many, 20 different branches. Then we opened the whole CIS. So it was a lot of opening. Then I was responsible for Europe, then Africa, then global projects, and now Europe and business development and a lot of interesting business projects. And so I was moving a little bit from analytical part to management part and the strategic management and right now more business development and the different type of projects. Mm -hmm. So finance is very broad, I would say, description of the things uh, what I learned uh, is the cultural difference is big and uh, it's so interesting to work in the different markets and the different regions very very interesting that helps me to stay for long will I recommend I think it depends very much on individual if you feel great and you see that you can develop yourself within the company why not to stay if you feel you cannot develop, why to stay? That is very simple. Uh, it's, uh, it's good to, uh, a good way of uh, looking at things. And I think uh, partly, I think obviously it's down to, to yourself and being a great cultural fit to, to, to the business. But as you mentioned earlier, having a great team around you and, and working for a, a company that, that recognizes your your abilities and what you can uh, bring um, to the table as well, which uh, so it's good, sounds like a very great partnership, which uh, obviously has lasted for 20 years and hopefully um, another 20 years to come maybe as well. But uh, yeah, so it's, uh, so I, I mean, one of the, the things, because you mentioned the word focus there earlier on, uh, and um, one of the things we find with um, successful people is that they are incredibly focused and they're very good at, at making sure they know what their priority is on a, uh, on any particular time, uh, but it's it's easier to say than it is to do. So, do you have any particular um, practices or techniques that you use to make sure that you keep that element of focus and priority in your uh, day to day role? Well, in terms of focus, number one is nothing um, top secret. It is uh, to handle properly the routine. You need to have the calendar, you need to have to-do list, you need to be disciplined to do certain things. If you don't have the discipline, you will never do so. Uh, then uh, my personal view, I am, I like to, I need to have certain block in the week or day when I can think about the conceptual things because otherwise the routine will take the whole of your time. Conference calls, emails, so impossible. So we need to allocate the time to think and allocate the time for the meeting to discuss about that. Because these strategic and important things are always important, but then we are later, 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 later. Then you will never implement anything. Mm. And this is what we discussed in the company. Sometimes even we discussed, but how to implement. You need to spend the time to implement, to think in details how to implement certain things. For me, I also take my personal time to think about that. And this is very important because we are rushing, so uh, time pressure is big. Before it was a plane, I was traveling, I was thinking, and I was writing to myself. 
uh, then lately it was uh, like you are working, hiking, you are thinking. Uh, so mm -hmm. you need to find the, the privacy, the time when you can think and do something. That is uh, very important. So, mm -hmm. yeah, nothing special. Mm -hmm. No, well, I, but, I, but I think this is, uh, it is special in, in, in the fact that you've been able to implement it. You know, I think that, that we tend, do tend to find that, you know, a lot of people know the theory behind what to do, but it's uh, yeah. then very difficult to actually implement it into your day-to-day -day, um, schedule. And, and the fact that Absolutely. you've had a great career shows that you obviously can uh, can do that. And uh, and I think it's uh, yeah, a testament to what you've achieved in your in your career to date as well. Yeah, one, one topic that people sometimes, this uh, life um, uh, home or office, yeah, the balance, how to find the balance in the life, I cannot say I find the balance in the life. It's still important that in the evening you read the mail and you spend a little bit more time than uh, the working hours. And this is inevitable if you would like to be on a top level. What is very important for me as well, not to read emails or difficult topics before you go to sleep, because then you cannot go sleeping. But otherwise, uh, people need to be prepared to work a bit harder than normal. Mm -hmm. if they would yeah. like to achieve something. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned the uh, sleep pattern there. In, uh, last year, we had a, a few um, gold medal Olympians on the podcast, and, mm -hmm. and they were both saying that, that people underestimate the value of of sleep and having a really good sleep routine is essential yeah. uh, to, to being uh, successful. They were saying if you if you were told there was a pill out there that could suddenly increase your energy, increase your drive and motivation, and it was free and all you had to do was uh, yeah to give it a bit of thought, you know, then you'd, you'd be taking that pill on a day to day basis. And that that in reality is just uh, it's just sleep and getting into a good routine on on that side. So checking. Uh, emails before your head hits the pillow is never a, never a good idea <laughs> that is absolutely i think i fully agree sleep mm -hmm. is super important we should not underestimate that one because if you are not fresh in the morning you will not be able to produce any productive mm -hmm. things so sleep is super important and i know that many many people during the pandemic time i wore it and the overnight uh, could not sleep well and my uh, people as well reporting to me, they are claiming, and we said that it is very, very important to relax, to have uh, working uh, around the house, at least if they cannot go uh, far. But I fully agree, sleep is super important. There's a key success factor. Yeah, I agree. And I, and I think one of the challenges to that, it sort of leads quite nicely on to another question I'd lined up to, to ask you, is that, you know, obviously, yeah, social media you have emails and now the with the added introduction of things like um bi ai and data you know it, there's more and more screen time uh, involved but it was more uh, along the lines of, i mean how, how do you feel that the introduction of bi and data is going to change the the roles of people in finance in the future but also change the the, the finance discipline of the future because it's going to i mean it's already started to have a bit of an impact but clearly in the next few years is going to increase. So I, mean, I thought it'd be interesting to get your, your thoughts on that, really. Yeah, well, we are using BI a lot and we are planning to use even more. We are using this artificial intelligence more and more. And for sure, this will impact finance role. I think that uh, uh, it was a trend uh, for a couple of years before when we did this uh, shared services, outsourcing. Now, I think this routine thing will be more towards this robotization and uh, uh, big data will be in BI. And I think this is very positive because then we could spend less time on the routine. Uh, still, somebody should check that this routine is working properly. So processes to be established and how to take this data. This is very important. What we see there are, for example, right now, different BI reports and people treat them differently. So it is for finance, the role is to provide proper reports and proper uh, evidences and proper analysis to that. So now less routine, but more analysis and what can we take out of this data and report? That will be more important. So yeah, finance role will be changed. Mm. More analytical and uh, if we can find any artificial intelligence that can read emails on behalf of us, I will be so happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think at the moment it's just a PA really, but uh, that's yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's really good if, uh, yeah, if we got to that kind of situation, that's uh, that's true. But I think, uh, you know, I mean, earlier on you mentioned about the 
the benefits of having a great a great team around you, which uh, yeah. is linked to the other things we talked about, actually, through the, the conversation. Um, I mean, it's, again, easier to, easy to say, but actually very hard to to do. So, I mean, I thought I'd ask you really what your thoughts are in um, in how to attract great people, you know, and, and, and what your, your thoughts are yeah. in, in terms of a, an efficient and effective recruitment process to, to attract the best people to the team, really. Well, uh, these are two things. One is the recruitment process, another how to attract a good team. Yeah, uh, I, and I will explain you for me. Very often, uh, we recruit people, we consider this as the best person, and then in practice, it might be not, and vice versa. Mm. Still, the recruitment process is very important to see. For me, experience is one part, but how a person is reacting uh, to different business cases and environment, how is he dealing with his colleagues? So that is, we should not underestimate because then we can see how this person will be within the team. So we are not working alone, we are working within the team. Uh, but the more important is to see how to build the team. And my experience is we don't have, of course, people are having bigger or less potential, but there are not people who cannot develop at all. Yeah, so it's more how far they can go. And within the team, what I see, if you are open and fair to them, if you provide fair feedback and be honest uh, with the bad and good thing to take as well to support them. So you, we need to be ready to support. I never saw, uh, of course, there are exceptions, but in general, I never saw people who cannot develop, who are not ready to develop and who cannot be part of the team. So, for example, my team right now, I'm very proud of. They are working hard and uh, they are also can be straightforward. If they are not happy with something, they can tell me if they're happy. Uh, uh, we also discuss, we manage to organize right now this team meetings. We even have got the party together mm. through the team online and that helps us as well to support each other. Mm. This is very important to feel that you have the support. Mm -hmm. So be fair, support each other, and uh, take uh, properly negative and positive feedback. Provide mm -hmm. and take. That is very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you, you, you mentioned the word support there, and, and I think it is really it is, it's vital, uh, I think, um, even before the events of last year, but I think it's been it's been quite challenging to, to do that, uh, you know, on on the video uh, calls and phone calls. But um, but I think what we found is that we, through all the challenges, the great managers and the great companies have really risen to the challenge. And you, you've seen the, that um, you mentioned earlier. I mean, you, you've been at Oriflame for twenty years, but there's a number of other people who've also been in, within the business for a good period of time. And I think, you know, these days it's so easy for anybody to go onto LinkedIn and actually to see uh, what the retention is like in the business. So and I think it's a big uh, testament to Oriflame, but also to, to mm -hmm. yourself as a manager, you know, to, to have a very you know, stable team and a group of people who, who feel the, the support that you um that, that, that you give them really. So I think mm -hmm. it's that, that management style. I mean, obviously that's not something that just happens overnight, you know, so is it, is it, is it, how has your learning curve been in terms of the, the management style? Is it, because uh, I guess it's obviously been a gradual process to get to this. Absolutely. Well, uh, you, well, I do not know. Do you know these people who are red, green, uh, blue, uh, mm -hmm. the style of the management? Yeah. So I was, uh, when I started the career was blue. Uh, as all finance analysts, went to red and a little bit too red because uh, as the finance people, we are controller, we can be tough and uh, we have to make the tough decision. And uh, now if I, if some people know what does it mean from red to yellow, meaning more the communication part. So important as a leader to be a role model, but also to be able to listen to people. I think that if you can be role model, listen to the people, provide the proper feedback, that is very important. So we can have very different opinions, but it's important to listen and clarify why do we have a different opinion. I think that is my learning curve. Uh, so how to listen to people and to accept their ideas still as a finance person, I need to control more uh, and to say no more, but in the way that people can understand why and respect this one. So 
to communicate properly. Mm. Communication is a, again key element in the business. Mm. The proper communication. Yeah, and I think the listening um, ability is something that often gets overlooked. You know, I think if people are yeah. asked to write down their key skills, it's actually very rare you see someone put listening down there because maybe maybe they are a good listener, but they don't just actually they don't think about that as a yeah. as a skill. But it's a huge um, skill, especially nowadays. Going back to what we were saying earlier about the, the number of distractions that can be going on, you know, you, you could, there's yeah. nothing more. There's nothing more frustrating than sitting down with somebody for a meeting and they've got their mobile phone that they're checking or they're checking emails while they're trying to have a exactly. conversation. And you, you just know that this information isn't being listened to. And it's, a, a you know, say, a, a vital skill for, for, for managers and, and for uh, people in the team as well to, to see and, and hear this as well, I think. And what is very important that the farther uh, up you are going, more you should listen. What I see very often the trend, it's vice versa. When people became more top and top directors, they listen less and less because, of course, they have got a lot of data, a lot of pressure, a lot of uh, yeah, time pressure. But that is the key element to manage to listen more and more, wiser mm -hmm. to stop listening. Mm -hmm. No, that's it. It's, uh, I mean, I was wondering, are there people who've inspired you, whether they're people you've had as mentors or whether they are... Uh, well-known people uh, out there um, as management gurus, let's say. Have you got any individuals who really inspired you to, to get you to where you are today, do you think? Uh, well, as people inspired me. I think that one is, of course, in the business, you are having the people around that uh, you are inspired um, and you learn uh, pieces. Uh, our current uh, CEO of the company used to be in Russia, MD of Russia. Uh, he is a Swedish people, my person, Magnus Brenstrom. So I was inspired before when we were working together and especially that I was blew many, a lot of analytical uh, skills, but he was uh, having this um, leadership style, very good leadership style, can communicate properly to people and intuition was working. So for me, how to use the intuition was really the learning part. Uh, and uh, the uh, recent, the regional, for example, for Europe, we had the regional head, uh, he left the company, but he, uh, the learning part for me was how he respects people. He really uh, tried to develop and respect people in a positive mode. Anything that happened is to create for him, that purpose was to create the confidence, positive mode to, towards the people, and he can get out of people a lot. That was also important thing. So the people colleagues around me, and right now my team, uh, the regional, I inspire. They are working differently, and uh, I like that we have got a different style I can learn. Uh, that is about the business, of course, what uh, I had the coacher for a long time, uh, the personal coach, this helps me a lot. It's not the inspiration, but helps me a lot how to communicate, how to deal with many cases. It's like, you know, uh, therapist for the business, I would say, when you cannot speak to the manager, you cannot, but you need to address certain things and then you can address and discuss. So I think this is very useful mm -hmm. if somebody can do and the third one, of course, reading the books. There are many books from good to great books. Sean Covey, if I remember correctly, yes. Uh, I like reading uh, a Harvard Business Review. I think that this is the uh, very interesting stories you are uh, listening or Bill Gates' uh, book or what I like a lot. Um, well, many, many books. They see all when uh, they um, release the books. I forgot the book, one of the book. Starbucks, what is his name? The previous CEO. Very interesting books. Uh, I cannot remember, uh, unfortunately. Uh, how to lead, how to develop the business. Many very interesting business cases. And that's how you learn. And that's how you inspire it. Mm -hmm. No, it's true. I mean, obviously, you know, when you're a child, you, you, you go through... Uh, you, the, the learning uh, system, and, and I think uh, you know if you if you want to get fit, a lot of people um, you know, have a personal trainer for that. Mm -hmm. And I think as you as you go on in your career, you you um, almost yeah you see the, the the personal coaches and those types of things as yeah. um, as a luxury rather than actually something that, you, that, that you're going to benefit from. And I think it's uh, you know again we we just see through uh, the the people that we've had on the podcast, the successful people. You know, they, they surround themselves with 
people who can um, who, who can improve them, and, and very often they'll have um, you know man, personal coaches on the um, on the business side of things, and and it, it just continues what we've done as as children. Really, you always want to be pushing yourself to the to the next the next level, you know. So I think that's. Uh, uh, it's great to hear your thoughts on that. And uh, and I thought I'd just end the, the podcast with a bit of an unusual question. Uh, and it's aligned with the, the people who've inspired you, really. So, I mean, if you were hosting your own podcast and you could have two people on the podcast from any walk of life through history or who are alive today, who would you have uh, on the podcast as guests? Mm. Uh I do not know, will you be surprised? One is, uh, uh, probably will be, I do not know. Uh, I would do the podcast of Angela Merkel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, She is a very strong uh, lady. And why would I choose her? Because she had such a big stress in her life. I just cannot imagine. And uh, she was always positive and uh, can manage. It's very difficult to handle all uh, this uh, in this environment, what uh, people are talking about her negatively, a lot of negative things, and still she managed to develop the country. So for me, it's how she managed to do that, how she managed to handle the stress. That is very interesting and uh, to develop. Uh, the second is more usual, probably, and many people would like it's Bill Gates. Uh, uh, he has a talent and also intuition, this intuition, how to develop successful business. Yeah. Uh, so first is a talent. You cannot buy the talent, but it's more than the talent. So it's something that uh, will be very interesting to learn. Mm-hmm. Uh, the intuition and uh, how to develop such a, a huge business. People are very often saying ah, that is uh, the success come for the luck. I don't believe in luck. Uh, so luck is coming with a certain experience or a certain action. So mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. is very interesting. Mm. I don't know. Have you seen the documentary on Bill Gates? It's called uh, Inside yeah. Bill's Mind. Yes. I, mean, I, yes. I saw that actually over, over, over Christmas. What... And it was really, it goes back to what you just mentioned there about luck. I mean, I think that, uh, yeah, the, the, you, you, I didn't really realize actually the extent of um, what, you know, what he'd he done, especially in his early years. And it really is a good insight into, yeah, who he is as a person, what makes him tick. But also yeah. going back to what you're saying earlier about, you know, prioritizing your day. I mean, I think one of the comments his colleagues had is that he's always on time for meetings, exactly on time. You know, his, his day runs almost like clockwork. And, uh, you know, I think it's uh, always a good uh, inspiration to see uh, these these kind of documentaries and how these really ultra successful people work. So uh, I'd like to see that podcast. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that'd that be will nice, be interesting. Uh, nice and interesting. What I would like to say is people, each individual are individual. We cannot, we sh- must be or we should be our own. We will not be Bill Gates. We will not be Angela Merkel. But if we listen to them and we take something for us, small pieces of each of the experience towards us, this is how we can develop. I think this will be the best for us to develop. At least that's how I'm developing. Mm-hmm. Well, nice. I think that's a very a very good uh, final quote to end the podcast on, really. I like, uh, like the, uh, the ending of that. So, uh, obviously, I, I've really enjoyed the conversation with you today, Tatiana. I mean, if... If any of the network wants to reach out to you, what's the best way they can do that? I think LinkedIn, and then uh, we can contact each other either via Skype or via Team. But LinkedIn is the natural first choice, I would say. Mm. Oh, that's perfect. Well, uh, when we post this onto LinkedIn, we'll put the the link to your profile on there to make it easy for people to reach out. And um, and once again, yeah, thank you very much for the time, Tatiana. Really enjoyed thank it. Very you. interesting, and uh, yeah, and uh, hope you have a great nice 2021. Talking. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot and have a nice day and the most important successful year. Yes, <laughs> fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Bye, 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 bye. bye. bye.